Week of Prayer Reading for Thursday, titled Nourished by God's Word. In a world in which the din of life usually drowns out God's voice, the Word of the Lord provides actual sustenance and nourishment. Psalm 19, 7 to 14 is a lovely example of how God's Word gives us spiritual sustenance, wisdom, joy, and guidance. In this devotional message, we will delve thoroughly into the theme, I will go and share God's word. We'll discover the transformative power of speaking his truth and how it can provide a rich life for both the giver and the listener. Ideal Fuel Our spiritual well-being is dependent on nourishment just as our physical bodies are dependent on food and drink to survive. The Bible is a wonderful refuge in an unstable and unpredictable world. We are immersed in the depths of God's love, comprehension and grace when we study his word. It feeds our souls by reminding us of God's steadfast character and unbreakable promises. Like a desert waterfall, It quenches our thirst with cool, pleasant water. This spiritual food, on the other hand, should be shared rather than kept to oneself. When we encounter spiritually parched people, we can offer them the same reviving waters that we have discovered in God's Word. In this way, we become conduits for God's grace revitalising and reviving people around us. Everyday Wisdom The Bible is a source of knowledge. Those who seek it develop understanding and wisdom. Many of us regard ourselves as simple or unwise, but God's Word has the power to change the unwise into wise. It offers helpful advice for dealing with life's challenges. The Bible is filled with stories of ordinary people who achieved remarkable feats through faith and obedience to God's Word. Their faith in God and dedication to His Word paved the way for their discernment and success. God uses us as a medium for wisdom transmission. Those who are struggling to navigate life's challenges may find clarity and aid from us. We can equip them to make wise decisions that glorify God and lead to a fruitful life. Heartfelt Happiness Joy is a precious and elusive gift in our world. Many people seek it in passing pleasures and pastimes only to learn that true and lasting joy can be found only in God's presence. His word reveals the path to genuine delight. The laws of the Lord are correct because they reflect his faultless and honest character. They direct us away from the disastrous paths of sin and selfishness and toward a life defined by love, grace and joy. When we obey God's commands, we experience a profound and enduring delight that transcends circumstances. We become joy bearers when we share the good news of God's word with others. We share the wonderful joy of knowing Christ, as well as the good news of redemption and transformation that he provides. Our testimonies bring delight and hope to people who are dealing with life's difficulties. A shining light in a dark place. God's word acts as a guiding light in a dark world, illuminating the path ahead of us. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. It provides direction in uncertain times, hope in despair and clarity in confusion. The Lord's laws empower us to walk in his truth because they are liberating rather than limiting. 
We become lights in a dark world as we spread the message of God's word to others. We assist people in discovering the way to salvation and virtue. We point people in the right way when they are lost and searching for significance. Our lives take on a testimony-like quality, shining brightly in front of everyone as proof of the transformative power of God's Word. Deep Spiritual Discovery As we journey to spiritual discovery, we unveil truth that combines the personal nutrition found in God's Word with a broader calling, the mission we have been chosen for. We recognise the crucial need to nurture our mind through the daily study of His Word to prepare for this responsibility. This is more than simply information. It is a spiritual feast, a source of power that vibrates deep inside the heart. This acceptance of God's Word as a perfect, trustworthy guide speaks not just to personal enlightenment, but also to being prepared for the mission to which we have been called. Furthermore, the commitment to obeying God's word is emphasised, echoing Psalm 19.11's promise of great retribution. This alludes to a double blessing, the personal enrichment that comes from living according to God's word, as well as the preparation for the mission ahead. It is a process of transformation in which the Word serves as a guide, a source of strength and a source of joy. In keeping with these fundamental realities, Ellen G. White's timeless wisdom resounds through the spirit of prophecy. In Early Writings, page 78, she writes, I recommend to you, dear reader, the word of God as the rule of your faith and practice. End quote. This is not a fleeting notion, but a fundamental principle that sets the tone for our faith journey and, by extension, our readiness for the role that has been assigned to us. Ellen G. White's teachings emphasize the timeless fact that the Bible is more than a book. It is the authoritative guide that steers our path of faith and mission. Our reading ends in verse 14 of Psalm 19, which becomes a personal commitment. Quote, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. End quote. This is more than a desire for personal purity. It is an understanding that incorporating his word into our life is not a passive act, but rather an active readiness to participate in God's plan. As a result of communicating the gospel with power and strength, our lives become living testaments to the transformative power of his word. We have been chosen for a mission. And this selection is more than just a name. It is a recognition that our lives, fed by his word, are equipped and enabled to fulfil a purpose greater than ourselves. Questions for Reflection How does God's word nourish your soul? Has reading the scriptures become a passive act for you? What changes could you make for it to become more active? This ends the reading for Thursday, written by Roger O. Kaderma, who is President of the Southern Asia Pacific Division of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. It has been read to you by Coralie Schofield, Coordinator for Christian Services for the Blind and Hearing Impaired in the South Pacific Division.